This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hi guys, this is Ranger Rob from Ranger Rob Country Living, and thank you for joining us today. It's kind of icky, blustery day here. Right here, the wind blowing. Sorry, we run over here out of the wind. So today we are going to. Uh, there we go. Sorry about the wind. Today we're going to add uh, additives to all of our gas that we have in storage, stabilizer. And so uh, uh, the first thing we're going to do is grab the stuff, check out what the measurements are supposed to be. Jeez. And uh, it's raining. Can you believe it? Uh, we haven't seen rain here for quite a while, but it's it's uh, quite a day here. Anyway, so we're going to put stabilizer in all of our fuel, all of our machines, and uh, because it's getting to be winter time and we're using things less and we're gonna have a lot of storage of fuel. And we want it to be good in case we have to fire up the generators and stuff. So, wow, it's uh, interesting weather out here. So let's get going. Well, we got all the gas tanks all filled up with a uh, stabilizer. And uh, so while we're kind of working on winterizing things, we're gonna do the RV. And uh, it's a real simple process. I thought I'd uh, take you along. Okay, one of the first things I gotta do is drain my tank uh, of all fresh water. But I can still do my winterizing even while I do drains. So the first thing we have to do is drain the hot water tank. So I'm gonna show my wife how to do that. So let's get going. On the Montana fifth wheels, super easy to do the uh, winterizing here. The first thing we wanna do is we're draining the main tank, then we're going to drain the hot water heater. And I, I kind of want Sherry to do this so she knows how to do it. But in the controls here, one of the things we want to do is turn on the hot water bypass. Because when we start putting the uh, antifreeze in, we don't want it going into the hot water tank. So I, all I have to do is turn that to uh, on. So we actually tur turn it on and now when we pump any water into this it will no longer go into the hot water tank so we just opened up the hot water tank there's a bolt down here which actually goes to a zinc uh, fitting in there it helps uh, protect the water in the tank anyway so i'm gonna have sherry remove it and we're gonna drain this out the other thing that makes it a little easier is make sure to release the air out of the tank so the water will f uh, flow out Typically, when you open this thing up, you're going to get wet. <laughs> well, Sherry and I got a good shower. Um, a little soggy here. Uh, I'm not sure if I got that on film. <laughs> uh, we just opened up the pressure thing. The water's coming out. Should have done that <laughs> before we opened that. There was a little pressure in there. So it's not hot water in there now. Now, we just want to drain that out. Uh, we don't have to put any antifreeze or anything in this. Uh, but we don't, we don't want antifreeze in here because it'll sit in there forever. So anyway, we're almost ready. All right, we're getting close to this stage. I keep a little hose in here. It's just a short hose with a, that'll go into this bottle I got of antifreeze, which will sit right here. I just got to connect it, and then uh, Sherry will turn on the pump, and it'll actually pull the stuff into the, all the faucets. What we do is we run the faucets till we see pink come out, and then we stop, and then we, uh, sorry about the wind. Anyway, uh, it's getting starting to be fall here a little bit. So anyway, let me get this hooked up and then Sherry and I will coordinate the uh, uh, pulling of this antifreeze into the system. So we got the bottle in, put my pipe in, goes into my winterizing system. Then I turn the switch here. It says to turn on winterizing, which means when she turns on the water pump, it will start pumping antifreeze into all the pipes. Now, this is a normal RV Marine antifreeze, which is not poisonous. And uh, what you want to do is get this into every faucet, 
shower and you want to get in into uh, your what do you call those P, P traps P traps um, and uh, then pour some into the septic holding tank because we got stuff in there so we don't want that freezing mm -hmm. and believe it or not we can do the whole RV with just one bottle which is amazing so Sherry put the seal back in she's just gonna tighten it up and that's all we have to do with a hot water tank so Sherry's going inside she's gonna turn on the electrical water system and uh, after that she's gonna go to each sink and start drawing water till she sees pink come through it so I just come around here make sure that you can see as she's turned it on it's starting to drop drip or drop down and she's pulling the antifreeze into the water system <coughs> and now she's going to go inside the RV go to the shower go to the head go to the kitchen run the water till she sees pink all right I'm in the RV right now it's a little dark but you can see she's been running the water in here she got pink water in here and she runs it in both sinks so a little bit of that goes into the p-traps and right now she's up in the head during the shower and the toilet and after that we're done so all the sinks and toilets are done I always have a little bit left in here so what I do is I give this to Sherry she goes to the head and pours it on the top just to protect the seal on the uh, toilet when it opens is a little round seal that needs to be kept wet otherwise it'll dry out and it can uh, uh, leak so anyway we're done I just got to take this hose off give this to Sherry and it's a done deal that's how easy it is to do a Montana fifth wheel amazing so we had a funny phenomenon just happen here when we travel and winterize the, the RV like that my dog automatically went to the truck and she thinks we're going somewhere I cannot believe look at this cinder we're not going anywhere <laughs> come here baby come here you guys are so smart is that amazing it's been like a year since I've done that and, and you know we usually winterize the RV and then we load the dogs into the truck she t and she totally remembered that <laughs> and she still thinks she's going somewhere I just can't get over that all right before we go the lighting's a little bad in here but that's all right I want to talk about Sherry's new endeavor which is a s starter the blob we call, we call it the blob because she's got to feed it every day anyway so she, you made starter sourdough starter right yes so first what's it take to even get this what do you have to do to actually start it it's two ingredients uh, just water and I used a whole wheat uh, flour uh-huh and that's and all you had to use to start it that like that yeah it's equal parts of water and flour you feed it you start with uh, equal amounts the next day you come in and you feed it uh, quarter cup of flour quarter cup of water for the day two and then the next day you have to discard half of it and feed it again you feed it twice a day uh, and discard once a day so we actually have been putting some of the discarding into the uh, compost, compost pile. pile so it's you supposed can also to be give, it, give it to your chickens do not put it down your drain because it's like cement <laughs> you'll be calling a plumber and um, once I got it up to a little over two cups, I made uh, sourdough pancakes for the first time, yeah. which means they're a wheat sourdough. Um, the wheat sourdough pancakes are not my favorite, but it was a starter. Yeah. And once you get your starter going, then when you feed it after that, you can use any flour. Okay. And then gradually that will turn into like a white, so it's not all the wheat. Yeah, so we made pancakes with it today they're okay they're not our favorite but uh we're not really huge on wheat pancakes so mm -hmm. we're gonna start i guess she's gonna start changing this over to regular flour mm -hmm. and then we'll make some other sourdough 
endeavors after that. Yeah, once it gets strong enough, it's not strong enough yet, but once it gets strong enough then, um, and to determine when it's strong enough, it's once it will double in its size in a 24 hour period. Huh. Once it gets to that point, then uh, it's strong enough to make breads. That's when it's truly the blob. Yeah. So hey, um, I thought it was pretty cool. That's something that homesteads used to do in the old days is make their own, uh, it's, it's not yeast, it's a starter. It's a starter. Okay. Um, huh. Another way to be self-sufficient, not having to have uh, dried yeast around the pantry or anything like that. It's a good, good way to start it. Cool. Well, there you go, guys. Um, anyway, uh, once again, sorry about the lighting. Uh, I hope, had a busy day. We got all the uh, gasoline switched over. We got the RV winterized. Uh, we're pretty happy about that. It's kind of a cold, windy day here today. We actually got a little rain, which was good. So anyway, please take the time to like and subscribe and share our videos all over the whole wide world. And share it to your best friend from high school. They'll love this video. Anyway, guys, talk to you later. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.